happy, happy, happy day. I hope you are having an amazing morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are and what part of the world. Got a little hair that's kind of crazy. Um, I'm happy to be with all of you today. Hello. So I was really pumped up to talk about guilt because I don't know about you, but so often it doesn't seem to matter what meal you eat, you hold this guilt. And I think what happened is that for so many years, if you've been dieting or researching or looking into nutrition, what happened oftentimes is that you end up knowing too much. You're like too smart. You know too much information. And then when you go sit down to have a meal, even if it's deemed healthy, there may be things like, oh, should I not have these tomatoes? Are these nightshades bad? Is this going to really upset my internal clock? Am I going to have infl an, uh, an inflammatory response? Right? It just starts really messing with your head. And then you feel like, oh, no matter what meal I have, I feel this huge sense of guilt. And it's so painful to come to a meal constantly having to manage or work through all these guilty feelings. So today I'm so excited to give you some tools if you're feeling that guilt is really wreaking havoc on your meal experiences. If you feel like you just are holding on to so much guilt when you eat that it almost seems painful to come to a meal and you have this good bad feeling with food then you're gonna love what I have to share with you today so let's jump in I know today's gonna might be a little bit smaller because of the 4th of July weekend no worries I'm excited to be with all of you all my workout classes also have been really small and tiny too because I just think people are on vacation good good for all of you and while you're on vacation you can listen to the podcast yeah let's talk about guilt oh okay there is a strategy and I want to share a strategy with you today so it may make sense for you to take notes in looking through what strategy you want to take on and what really is going to resonate with you as you start to approach your relationship with food to lessen the guilt it has over you, okay? So the first thing, we want to really lessen or remove any of the triggers. Lessen or remove any of the triggers. Yeah, let's remove or lessen any of those food triggers. So what here's what I mean is like anything that reinforces your guilt, like if you feel guilty every single time you have sugar, let's just reduce the amount of sugar that's in your home. Let's reduce what you have laying around so it doesn't create so much guilt. And we'll just work through one area at a time, one food item at a time. Because if you have too many areas at once, then it can feel a little bit overwhelming, okay? But then I want you to reduce any of the people or any of those other triggers. Like you can't just like say, okay, husband, bye. Well, you could, but I, I many of us don't want to, or by partner, or by spouse, by friend. But you can start recognizing who's showing up in your life and where are they triggering you? How are they triggering you? So I just want you to just kind of assess what are the triggers that trigger guilt for you? What gets you all wrapped up inside of feeling triggered and guilty? And like where you feel like, oh my goodness, this food that I'm eating, oh, I'm so bad. What are those triggers? We want to start reducing them. So in other words, if you've spent so much time learning about nutrition, and when you learn about nutrition, you get all these rules, right? This is good. This is bad. This is good. This is bad. And then when you eat the thing that someone just told you is bad, does that create guilt inside of your life, your meal experience? If that's the case, then you might want to lessen the number of nutritionists that you are listening to. You might want to lessen all the rules and the information that you have in your head if that's triggering you. Lessen the social media, lessen the good food, bad food, anything that supports that, you might want to just 
remove yourself for a bit so that you can really start to feel empowered instead of guilty in relationship with your meals and food. So we want to remove or lessen any of the triggers that ignite guilt, okay? The second thing, next thing what we want to do is want to look at what are your shoulds and shouldn'ts? What are your shoulds and shouldn'ts around food? I shouldn't eat this, right? That's where guilt comes into. You're having something and there's a part of your head that says, I shouldn't have this. This is bad. I'm bad. And then you feel guilty. Or I had this sweet thing. Oh, that was so bad. Now I feel guilty that I had that. So when you approach a meal or you approach food, or even if you look at or write, a what, write down what it is that are your shoulds and shouldn't. I should be eating more vegetables. I shouldn't eat sugar. I shouldn't have more than, you know, four meals a day. I shouldn't or I should. And do they trigger an essence of guilt inside of you? Even with hunger and satiation, even with that realm, does that trigger guilt when you do it or don't do it? And just, you'll start to notice, wow, what are my shoulds and what are my shouldn'ts? And when you write this big list down and you start to see your shoulds or your shouldn'ts, then it's like, that's the information from the world that's come upon you in, in terms of food. Then it's about you taking your power back taking your power back so that you start to decide, do I want this food item in my life and in my body? And how much? What feels good? And so when you look at the list and you go, okay, I decided that I want to have, I always feel guilty every time I have ice cream. Then you look at it and you go, okay, wait a second. Do I just want to remove ice cream from my life? No. But what feels like a good amount of ice cream to have? And is there quality, is there better quality ice cream that I might choose that feels better in my body? And then from there, you can do and you can look at, okay, you know what? A couple times a month, I love the idea of having ice cream or a couple times a week, or whatever you determine as the thing that you want to do in relationship to your guilt-creating foods. Because then you have the power over it. Not a diet, not somebody else, not something else. You, you get to decide. And sometimes we just hold on to this guilt and it feels like it's just been guilt brought into our bodies for so many years. We don't even know how to live without having guilt inside of ourselves as it relates to food. But this is where I want you to take your power back. Wait, is there anything really wrong with me having nut butter? Well, then why do I feel guilty every time I have it? Hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. I just want to maybe have one teaspoon or one tablespoon instead of four. Okay, fine. So then you start to really look at these food items. Do you want to have them in your life? How do you want them in your life? Do you want them every day? Is this something you want to put in your body daily? Uh, a few times a week, every other day, often, dinners? You start to decide. And then what's the amount that feels really good. So if you, let's say, have a sensitivity to bread and you say, you know what? Having bread too often really bothers my stomach, but I'm not willing to give it up. So having it a couple times a week feels really good for me. And when I have it, I'm going to have a digestive enzyme or I'm going to have something to help support me to break it down. So then all of a sudden, you have it a couple times a week, there you go, you've lessened the guilt, you've lessened the shame, you've lessened the conversation of what you should have, shouldn't have, bad, good, and you've just put food in its place. Now remember, the naturally thin don't have these big conversations, these guilty conversations, those that are naturally thin, they're listening to their body, they're choosing a variety of foods that feel good in their body, and that's it, they eat it. They don't overeat it and move on. Okay. So then I want you, once you've eaten the food, or once you think about the decision even to have the food, let's say we're using the example of bread 
two times a week. Then I want you to just feel, how does that feel in your body to have that? And then when you eat the food, you want to notice, how does it feel in your body to eat it? You want to confirm, hey, twice a week, am I willing? Am I open? Am I willing to feel this way? And the answer might be absolutely, or the answer might be, heck no, I am not willing to feel that way. Your choice, your choice, and you make it and you adjust. And then after you've made the decision of how it feels in your body, the next thing and the last thing you do is you think about, okay, if I were to have bread twice a week, Let's just say, I'm just using this example. When I have bread twice a week, how is that going to play out five years from now? Does that feel good? So we future pace it. We look into the future. We don't make it so immediate. And we look into the future and go, okay, if I'm having ice cream once a week, if I'm having bread a couple times a week, if I'm having it as often as I'm hungry for, how does that play out five years from now. How do I feel about that? Is that going to be great for my body? Is that not going to be great for my body? Do I need to make some adjustments right now so that I know exactly the amount that I want to have? And we just start tweaking it and playing with it. But by taking it out of the present and moving it into the future, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah, that nut butter a couple times a week feels really good, if that's, let's say, a trigger. That sugar a couple times a week over five years, that feels really fine for me. Or that feels like too much. Or that feels like too little. It doesn't feel doable. Okay? We start to really look at moving from guilt, which oftentimes comes from shoulds and musts and have tos, shoulds and shouldn'ts, musts and have tos, and that language around that. And we start moving that energy and the languaging into, wait, does this work for my body or not? And how do I want it to work for my body? We then put the power back inside of you. That's going to lessen the guilt because then you are choosing. Now, some of the things I want you to think about is if that guilt is bopping around in your head back and forth over and over and over, you may want to use some affirmations to help support your decisions around what you've made the choice around. Like, I am learning to feel comfortable with having sugar or bread a couple times a week. Or you can tell yourself, I'm releasing this guilt out of my body so I can comfortably enjoy my meal and taste my food and enjoy the food because what happens is if the guilt is overriding your meal experiencing experience you're not tasting are you like if it overrides that meal experience for you how can you taste your food you can't because you're so busy feeling badly about what you're putting into your body that how could you fully completely mindfully be enjoying your meal. You can't, which is why we want to lessen the guilt. And if there's guilt, we want to remove it, lessen it, move it out of your body by telling it, thank you for sharing. And I'm practicing removing this guilt so I can fully and completely taste and enjoy and be mindful with my meal experience. And from doing that, what gets to happen for you is you get to feel empowered instead of guilt. And you don't have to walk through every meal with a sense of guilt. Oh man, I really shouldn't have eaten that. Why not? Why? I want you to start challenging this because somebody said so or because your body actually feels inflamed when you eat that way because your body actually hates that food. And so instead of saying no forever, can we say less right now? Can we move into that less? And if you feel like, no, I never want to have it, that's fine. As long as you're not fighting with that no inside of your head. Okay. 
So let me look at some of your questions here around guilt and feel free to just ask away in the chat and I will look at all of these. I need to change my thoughts that produce guilt and leave me powerless. Okay. So now, Miss Erin, you have a strategy to be able to do that where you start to look at what are those foods that are providing guilt? What are the foods? What are the circumstances? You could mostly it's it's food or a behavior. And then you can look at it. And then you can look at are these like write it all down, see it on paper so you can see. Because sometimes it's like, wow, why am I giving myself grief for having tomatoes? Why am I giving myself grief for having a few pieces of candy? Why am I giving myself grief for, like you said, Lisa, feeling eating past neutral or eating too much? And so we start to look at, okay, what if you didn't give yourself um, guilt? What if it didn't feel guilty? But what if you could find empowerment and excitement and passion and joy in Stopping when your body's no longer hungry. Stopping a little bit sooner. So we just can move that energy from a negative or a guilt energy into an empowering energy that may say, hmm, I'm curious. Can I do this? I wonder what this would feel like. How does this feel? Let's try this out. Let's move into a real empowering state instead of a lack or a guilty place. because. If you feel guilty because you ate past satisfaction, and for those of you who are overeating and you feel guilty every time you overeat, instead of feeling guilty, what's a useful emotion that can help support you to, un to lose weight, frankly? And I'd like to think that instead of feeling guilty, we can feel like curious and introspective. And go, okay, why? What was going on? What's happening? And for those of you in the inner circle, we talked about this Monday of releasing that stuck energy. Moving it out of your body. Because oftentimes empaths, highly intuitive, high feeling individuals, we get this energy stuck inside of us. We're going to move it past. So listen to that training about that. So I want to move you from guilt into power. So think about Miss Lee. So what would move you from feeling guilty to feeling like empowered to stop? And that you go, okay, I'm not going to feel guilt anymore. I'm just going to get really curious why this is happening so that I can do the internal work to totally change it and, and master this because I can. And I will. See the difference, the energy shift. And it's about saying, is it okay if I ever eat past satisfaction? That's the question too for those of you. Is it okay if I, if I eat when I'm not hungry? And the answer might be, heck yeah, it's totally fine. And I'm, okay, well then what is that going to look like? How often do I want to do that? then make the decision. You know what? A couple times a week, it's fine if I come to food and I'm, and I'm eating when I'm not hungry. Or it's, a, it's fine to have a couple meals a week where I overeat. But you get to decide. You decide what feels right inside of your life, inside of your mind, inside of how you want to show up with food so that you reduce the guilt. You reduce the feeling of being bad in relationship with food, because when we feel guilty, when we feel bad, there's nothing positive that comes out of that. We don't go, oh, I feel amazing. <laughs> it's like I feel guilty. And then the guilt can create more eating and more overeating and more overconsuming in other areas. And then the bashing. So it doesn't help you to feel guilty. What will help is you looking at your shoulds and your shouldn'ts what triggers the guilt, and then to look at, wait, do I want to believe this? How am I going to shift this? I feel terrible if I overeat. 
Do you feel emotionally terrible? Do you feel mentally terrible, Paula? Because those are two very different pieces, right? Emotionally terrible. If you feel emotionally terrible, if you overeat, then it's like, okay, we don't have to feel terrible, but let's just get curious about why that occurred. And then let's just make, make some adjustments. Okay. And if it's, so if it's emotional, if it's physical, like, oh, I just don't love overeating. It feels terrible in my body. Use feeling terrible in your body, not for guilt, but as information to say, wow, I really love to eat less food. I really like the feeling in my body to get up from a meal and feel like I can go dance and run around and be light and lean and healthy and vibrant. That's what I want you to be thinking about. So, it, so they are slightly different in if it's emotional and physical. And I see that they're both. So they have different responses based on what you're experiencing. I feel guilty when I don't restrict myself and eat too much when you're not hungry. So let's lessen. Same thing. So there's guilt now about when you don't restrict. Okay. Even in that energy is like restrict, is this tightening up energy. So what about you can feel amazing when you have certain foods? And then I would look at what are those foods that make you feel amazing when you eat them? Because you all have all those foods that you go, you know what? I feel amazing about myself when I eat a ton of vegetables, when I eat real whole foods, when I eat foods that work for my body, that feel like they're getting digested and processed. I feel great when I eat a lot of kimchi or pickles or whatever you want to say, just put it all. What makes you feel great? Those should be the things you might want those. I shouldn't say um, should. You might want those to be the foods that you eat more of. And then you look at, wow, these are the foods that make me feel guilty. Maybe I have a little bit of less of them, but I'm going to incorporate them into my weekly, monthly diet. And I'm going to keep practicing and honoring my body, making sure that I don't feel guilty when I eat too much, but I'm learning from what's going on when I eat too much or what's going on when I just want to eat to numb out or emotionally turn off. I'm going to learn from it because then it's not guilt focused. Now, there's the learning piece and then there's the action piece, right? So from the learning piece, which is amazing. I want all of you to learn about yourself. Then it's looking at what am I willing to do now that I see every single night I want to eat and I have no, it has nothing to do with hunger and I want to eat popcorn. Okay. So is that a problem? Is that a problem for you? Why is that a problem? How do you want to address that? Is there a certain amount that feels like that's a really good amount? Maybe you're willing to go to two nights a week. All of a sudden, you'll feel this internal like, yes, that's it. Twice a week, I'm going to eat at night when I'm not hungry, and I'm going to have popcorn a couple times a week, and that feels amazing. Done. Then all of a sudden, you follow through, and the guilt gets to leave. Now, guilt is one of those things that just can pop up and keep popping up. So it is, it is if you have the space in your life and in your time to be looking at it, looking at what's causing it and then releasing it through this strategy, you will really see some nice benefits. Let me go through the strategy just one more time so that you all have it, okay? One, you want to remove or lessen the triggers that reinforce your guilt, okay? Remove and or lessen. So if it's a ton of sugar, let's just remove some of it so that you don't have to be fighting through life and your pantry, right? It's not like we don't want you to be beating each other up, right? So we want to remove and lessen the trigger um, and reinforce that reinforce your guilt, I should say. Two, I want to make sure you are determining and looking at your shoulds and shouldn'ts. Where did these come from? Do you want to have these shoulds and shouldn'ts? Are they playing out in your life in a positive way? 
Are they helping you lose weight? Or are they making you feel guilty and terrible? And so look at them. And then I want you to determine do how you want to have them in your life. You get to decide. So number, so let's see. So we've got one, remove and lessen your triggers. Two, determine your shoulds and shouldn'ts. Three, take your power back by you deciding. Do you really want to go the rest of your life not having a particular food just because someone said it was bad? You get to decide how you want to have that food and if you want it in your life. If you decide you want to have these foods, number four, determine what a good amount feels like. Determine what that feels like, where it feels like, yeah, that feels really good. Number five, notice how that decision feels in your body after you eat. So you decide, I'm going to have a little bit of bread. Notice how that feels after you eat. And then you can just reinforce, wait, let me see. Does that feel good to choose two pieces or two breads a week? Because I know I'm going to feel really, really tired afterwards. Yeah, but I'm willing to do it. If I do too much less than that, I'm going to feel so deprived. Okay, great. And then notice the last step, number six, I believe. Notice how that amount feels. How does that amount feel five years out if you keep doing this? Because sometimes we just need to get distance from some of the guilt we're having about milk or about dairy or about something we're eating. And we're like, really? Is it really that big a deal? Do I really need to feel guilty about this one string cheese, this tablespoon of nut butter that I have or whatever it is? Okay. So that is what I want you to practice. And then if you feel the guilt still there, you can talk to your brain through affirmations, letting your brain know that I'm releasing any guilt and I'm bringing in comfort, joy, allowance, beauty, health, vitality into this process. Okay. So that is the strategy. And I will put these in the podcast notes so it can be really clear about the strategy that you can start using to lessen some of that guilt that you might be experiencing because this is real. It's so real. And remember, it has you can do this around foods or behaviors, foods or behaviors. And so you could then look at your behaviors that are making you feel guilty and look at where and how you want maybe overeating or late night eating or giving into cravings, how you want that to look like. And then you kind of map out this plan and then you go, great. I'm going to put this in that in my inside of my pantry. I'm going to have this plan of how I'm going to show up with food. Here are the foods that really work well in my body that I love. And then I'm just going to add these other pieces into the mix. And I'm going to look at working through my behaviors without guilt and through empowerment, through reward and through celebration. Okay. So I want you to go practice, practice. Practice moving through that guilt because we don't need to hold it on to that guilt. It's nothing is going to come out of that guilt that's going to be remarkable and beautiful and exciting. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. So remember, I think we were like at a countdown. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We're like six day countdown to the next 30 day challenge. We start July 12th, Monday. So if you know any family, friends, loved ones who are excited, want to try an intuitive eating challenge, a new approach to food, a way to be in your body mentally, emotionally for 30 days, I would love to have them join me. All right, everybody, I will put these in the show notes for tomorrow and I will talk to all of you soon. Have an amazing, amazing day. Bye, everybody.